It's right there. Hey, this is David with Haggerty, our Redline Rebuilds. We are at Thurlby's with our Subaru parts. Now you can see that they are dead swamped. So I had to pull some big favors, not only to get in line and, well, unfortunately jump in front of a couple people, but also to have them machine these Subaru parts. So after Mike inspected these real quick, he's like, yeah, you could throw the stock pistons back in it and do that but you'll be sorry. So we're gonna take these 20 over and uh, clean things up. Now, something I want you to look at on these design and when we go to cut this, you'll have to cut it in, in shorter steps. So instead of just going right after 20 thousandths, you'll have to take an increment of 10 and 10 because Subaru decided to put this hole going through the side of this so you can access the wrist pin but it also makes a real bear when you're bringing a cutter across that. It wants to chatter and all that sort of thing. And you can see the bottom of the hole is not very far after the bottom of the cylinder, which makes it tough. So when you're doing a hone, that hone wants to go past that uh, full stroke, if you will, on that uh, cylinder. Well, when you don't, when you can't go past it because it's a dead hole, that makes it a little more difficult to hone that. All right, so. As Mike goes through and gets these ready for us, I'm gonna go find a bagel. Told you I was gonna find one. All right, cool. So we have block halves put together or ready. That was pretty painless. Good thing Mike knows what he's doing, huh? So we're gonna take these over. We'll wash them in our uh, deal. Get those ready. What do you want to do with the rods? I would say we'll torque up the big ends. Uh, okay. Four gauge setup. Check those. Make sure they're at size. All right. Uh, being that they're a bush, we can actually check the small ends to make sure they're oh, yeah. stacked okay. also. All right. All right, so Mike went through and checked them, and uh, he's saying our big ends and small ends are still within spec. So we're gonna run with it. One last thing to do. Okay, so Mark's pulling apart the heads here, pulling the keepers off. Modified drill press to do this. Actually worked out quite well. The key is the fact that he's, there's a turntable on here so you can tip it. But first off, he went through and did a, a vacuum check on it just to kind of understand the condition of the valves. Uh, we do have a couple that are uh, exhaust valves that are seemingly burnt. They're not sealing up real well. But we'll, uh, we'll address those after everything's tore apart, but it's always a good idea to have an idea where you're headed. And that's where we're at right now. Well, we got a full okay. drill press and guide the seat machine. Okay. We converted it for taking it apart and reinstalling valves and keepers. So would your rockauto.com tip of the day be, be resourceful? Yes. 
I make that. Use what you've got. Use what you got. Make what you have work. Yep. It's like four things moving at once here. <laughs> Sweet. Well, there's not a lot of clearance between the, the retainer and the top of the valve stem, is there? So if you ever wonder why cam timing is important, the cam drives the valves, right? Well, as you can see, if this valve happened to be open and then this valve wanted to open, it would tend to have a binding issue. And it not by much, by the way, because they're almost in contact right there. And they're definitely hitting there. That wouldn't be a that wouldn't be a fun day at all. I don't care who you are. So we got re springs, retainers, spacers, everything out except for the valve stem seals here. And they are on both the intake and the exhaust. As I punch myself right in the chin. Now, this isn't a homemade tool. That's pretty slick. All right, so as we've been forewarned, there'd probably be some cracks in these cylinder heads, specifically between the exhaust valve and the spark plug hole. You can see on this head, we've got a pretty good size crack. And when we go over here to this other one, we have the same problem here. And there's a real light one on this one. So what we're gonna go ahead and, and pressure test the whole assembly um, as far as the casting concerned and see how bad they are if they're leaking or not yet No sign of leakage So they're surface cracks Dave and walk me through what's going on So basically we have a plate on top of the cooling passages and putting the air into the to the uh, coolant passage within the head pressurizing that side of it and then looking for a leak at that crack. So we got some system leakage, but really what we're worried about is right at, right at the leak for the crack here. Let me see if we see any air bubbles. Like you have system leakage up here, right? Yeah. Well, if that, if that crack is, crack is all the way through into the water jacket is where it becomes a real issue. All right, so we've gone through and we've pressure checked both cylinder heads. Uh, we have cracks in both cylinder heads between the spark plug and an exhaust valve. Um, so we wanted to be really careful and make sure they didn't have a leak into the cooling area, right? So we're not getting water into the combustion chamber basically when all is said and done. Um, so we've done everything from that aspect that we could. We've heated it up even to try to expand the aluminum, try to make it, make it leak, if you will. Uh, but nothing's going that far. Uh, Nothing's causing it to externally leak at this point, at least testing it in that way. Because when we look down the spark plug hole, the crack goes clear down into these threads, seven or eight threads in. Now, when we look into the side, uh, into the coolant passages, this area is pretty solid relative to um, aluminum. There isn't really any coolant right there. Um, so it would have to be pretty deep for it to crack into the coolant area. It's kind of like the stove bolt heads. They all crack. Some of them are cracked all the way through. Some of them aren't. So far, this one shows that it's not. Um, but I'd love to see in the comments how many horror stories there are of uh, get it all back together and the heads will crack because I'm sure there are plenty um, just the way things go.
All right, so Mark has went through and has our cylinder head all ready to be reassembled. Now, what that amounted to is you saw we went through and we crack checked it, and yes, we had two cracks up here on the surface of this particular head. We leak checked it. There is no external leak. We have no um, indication that there's any problems whatsoever, so we're gonna just run with it. Um, went through and resurfaced the top of the, uh, the bottom, if you will, of the cylinder head, so it's ready to mate to the block, and then went through and freshened up the seats. Now on the valves, we opted to go with brand new valves and on the exhaust side of things, he's went through and lapped those in and on the intake, they're basically ready to go right out of the box. And then we also took all of our stock springs and went through and vibratory cleaned them and then Mark checked them on the spring tester and basically make sure that they're still within spec relative to the installed height and the working height. And at this point, we are ready to reassemble these and then we're going to go through the process of setting lash which is a lot different than what we've been doing on all the other blocks because the camshafts are sit are mounted to the top of the head so they're independent of the block and the timing so we can set lash on the bench as a normal procedure but then when i go to assemble that onto the motor i'm going to double check that lash and make sure everything's okay All right, so the pieces parts with the Subaru head is really quite typical of every other cylinder head you're gonna work on. You have obviously your casting that holds the head, or hold, <laughs> you have your casting that holds all the parts. You have a valve. On aluminum heads, you will always have this little seat saver. So you have the valve goes into the head. From the other side now, you have your seat saver. You have a spring. The retainer. And then you have these little bitty keepers. There's two of them. They hook on to this. The wedge effect in there then holds everything together. And quite honestly, the difficulty here is the size of the parts. Now that both heads are assembled, I'm gonna take over here with the first one I did, and I'm gonna assemble the camshafts on, and then check my valve lash. Now again, you can do the valve lash here, and then double check it once it gets onto the assembly, which is what I'm going to do. All right, so part of this assembly is you have this big cap with a shim that goes here, and then we'll go on top of the valve spring, and then, the camshafts will go down in there, and then you'll torque everything down, take a feeler gauge, and verify that my lash is correct. If that lash is not correct, then I need to get a different thickness shim to put in place. Well, I'm gonna slap this together, measure that lash, and hopefully I don't have to do a bunch of you know, juggling around.
Well, that's why this one's dragging. So, first things first, valve lash. Using the specs, it says, call it seven to not quite nine thousandths on the intakes, and a little over 12, and call it 14. I know those are very round numbers, but gives you something to start with. So, what I did is I went through, torqued everything down, and now I measured all of them. So, for instance, all my intake numbers are very are loose so call it seven at a minimum i'm i'm at 14 and 13 and 12. on my exhaust i got 12 as a minimum and i'm really a little big in all cases this one i'm not sure maybe that cup's not all the way seated but this is definitely too tight this is close 15 would uh not quite be in there and 14 is in spec uh, I'm going to shoot for the wear side of things, so I'm going to shoot for 13, and I'm going to shoot for 7. So at this point, none of these numbers are 7, and none of these numbers are 13. So I'm going to make adjustments in thousands increments, hopefully, and get those numbers in. Now I get to take it all back apart. This is where things get time consuming. All right, so for me to go through and set up the lash correctly, I'm basically gonna have to take both camshafts in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, and then probably one more time of in and out, swapping around these shims until I get ones that line up right. So I have numbers what my base shims are, and then I'm gonna adjust up and down relative to what I want for gap. So while I do that, well, get your work done in the shop, and I'll see you next time around.